Who doesn't dream of pushing a button in their car and lifting above the traffic? That might be a fantasy, but Kleinvision's $2 million air car gets us that much closer. Kleinvision, a design company that has been working on the problem of the flying car for the last 16 years, has passed an important hurdle in developing their solution with the straightforward name Aircar. Passing this test, they hope to have a commercial version in the next 12 months. Making a car, a car that people will legally accept as a car, is difficult but not impossible. Garage craftspeople have been building kits for making unique autos as a hobby for a while. But as you can imagine, airplanes are a little trickier. Making the bridge from experimental craft to proper airplane requires a specific set of testing and certification. And that's the hurdle that Klein Vision has just accomplished. After 70 hours of what they describe as rigorous flight testing for their transformable air car, it has been given a certificate of airworthiness. That included over 200 takeoffs and landings monitored by the Slovak Transport Authority with the test compatible with the European Aviation Safety Agency, all of which is to say that it's been given the stamp of approval to tell people that it will take off, and more importantly, it will land when you want it to, instead of just dropping out of the sky suddenly. Yeah, that probably wouldn't be ideal. It's also an important step in selling their flying car as a part-time plane. That doesn't mean that the air car will be flying in the showrooms right away, but it is a difficult hurdle to clear. So don't start fantasizing about leaping out of traffic quite yet though. The air car is both a proper car and a proper airplane in one, but that comes with all the regular restrictions that airplanes have, like needing a pilot's license and restricting takeoff and landings to airports. When you get to the airport in your air car, it's the push of a button to turn your car into an airplane. Primarily, it involves the spoiler extending out of the back of the car and the wings unfolding from their tucked position. Once in this position, the BMW sourced 1.6 liter engine switches from driving the wheels to driving the pusher prop, and it's up, up, and away. The whole process takes a total of just three minutes. Once in the air, it can climb to a ceiling of 18,000 feet for a range of about 620 miles. The tail wing doesn't just take the day off when it's in car mood. When retracted, it pulls duty as a spoiler, providing downforce. One of the primary barriers in making a car that's also a plane is the issue of weight. When a car is just a car, it already can add up when it comes to tipping the scales. On average, a car can end up weighing between 1 and 2 tons, depending on how many amenities you want. Cars that are designed for lightness sacrifice a lot to the altar of that golden horsepower to weight ratio. Exotic materials and carbon fiber are generously deployed and various comforts are removed. And those cars don't have to store wings and propellers and flight gear. The air car tips the scales at 1100 kilograms with a carrying capacity of 200 kilograms for the two-seater. To help keep the car in the air, the body is designed around a concept called lifting body. In essence, the lifting body design turns the entire body of the craft into a wing that provides lift. The design was popular for spacecraft for re-entry to help the crafts glide down rather than just plummet from the sky. It was explored for the space shuttle, but it proved too difficult to attach to fuel and rockets for liftoff. When in plane mode, the air car adjusts its aerodynamics essentially from down to up. Now that Climb Vision has managed to prove that the car can car and that it can plane too, they're moving on to the next stage of development. Part of that is turning it into a marketable car that people would want to spend any amount of time in, with many of the in-cabin features not identified, except for the state-of-art avionics to keep flights on plane and the ground a comfortable distance away. This development includes plans for a 300 horsepower version, as well as a four-seater and twin-engine model. For those not content with a thing that is actually two things, Klein Vision has a version that can land on water as well as land, so you can finally have your very own triple changer. If you want to use your air car in both modes though, you'll need a full pilot's license in addition to your driver's license. If all of this sounds vaguely familiar, it's because we've been here before, and relatively recently. Only then, it was the Terrafugia Transition, a potential $350,000 to $400,000 flying car option that might not happen. Like the air car, the Transition is powered by a 100 horsepower engine in both ICE and hybrid configurations. The Transition incorporates all of the safety features of both of its configurations with crumple zones and airbags for terrestrial situations, and an airframe parachute just in case the whole flying thing doesn't work out suddenly. Navigating the open sky is assisted by the Dynon Skyview system, and seeing around the ungainly folding wings is assisted by three cameras. The Transition had its flight worthiness certification with the FAA all the way back in 2012. The smaller and lighter craft has half the ceiling at 9,000 feet 
with a range of 400 miles, so long as everything on board is less than 500 pounds. Founded by a group of MIT grads in 2006, the 2012 flight was key in them receiving several rounds of funding in order to clear the next difficult hurdle, getting the transition approved for street usage. Department of Transportation requirements and crash testing called for extensive redesigns and some concern that the additions would push the weight of the craft high enough that it would be no longer qualified as a light sport craft and therefore requiring the more extensive pilot's license, like the air car. While the transition was no longer grabbing headlines, there was still movement in the company. While they were working towards making the transition road legal and lightweight, a stablemate emerged as a concept, the TFX. Instead of transitioning to a plane like the transition, the pod-like TFX would extend its propeller mounts, facing them upward, making it a VTOL, or vertical takeoff and landing craft. Once in the air, the rotors would rotate forward to push the flying car through the air. This design is more adaptable and would potentially be able to take advantage of whatever VTOL regulations come to pass as other personal flying vehicles enter the market. But the big news came when the founders of the company left and ownership transferred to Jezong Geely, who owns Lotus, Volvo, and Proton. Lotus was founded by Colin Chapman, whose care design philosophy was simplify, then add lightness, a practice ideal for flying cars. Geely has shut down most North American operations, moving them to China. At $350,000 to $400,000 a piece, it was thought that the vehicles were too niche and too expensive to make a dent in the American market, but stood a better chance of finding buyers in China, where it might also be easier to get road certifications. Back in 2012, Terrafugia was taking reservations for its coming flying car, but ended up refunding a number of them as production delays pushed back the car, which was set for a 2022 release, before the company was sold and restructured. Or maybe you were remembering the Slovakian-based Aeromobile, which did its airworthy testing in 2013. The much more dramatic design has spent the last 10 years doing flight testing and development, with the latest being the Aeromobile AM 4.0, the fourth evolution of the car. Like the coming air car, the Aeromobile sports a 300 horsepower hybrid drivetrain that shares propulsion duties for both land and air. Just like the air car, it will require a pilot's license if you want to slip the surly bonds of Earth. You don't have to be the best student, however, as the flight controls are designed to be easy to use and include autopilot functions. It has some other familiar sounding stats, like a 600 mile range and three minutes from car to plane or plane to car. Aeromobile claims that it'll be ready to start taking orders in 2023 for a 2025 delivery, which sounds pretty impressive, but not as impressive as 2020 sounded, the last target date they set for deliveries, which also wasn't as good as the 2017 release date that was targeted before that. Like the air car, it would come with a hefty price tag, anywhere from 1.3 to 1.63 million. While a lot of focus has been given on the Aeromobile's airworthiness and safety, including a ballistic frame parachute and protective cockpit shell, that elusive NHSTA crash safety certification is notably still missing. Maybe it's for this reason that the Netherlands-based company, PAL-V, went in the other direction for getting their flying car ready for market. Announced in 2013, the sometimes trike, sometimes auto gyro has gone through the process to make it road legal in Europe first, and now faces airworthiness tests. With its focus on road certification up front, the PAL-V has yet to actually leave the ground. While touching the ground, the transformable is good for 100 miles per hour, with an extra 18 once it gets airborne, should it actually make it off the ground. To get airborne, the PAL-V Liberty goes with an auto gyro setup, with a powered propeller pushing the craft, and an unpowered rotor spinning with forward momentum, providing lift with the wing-shaped blades. This means it can land in confined areas, and needs less runway to take off. All of the go to get the trike up and going is provided by a pair of Rotax 912 IS engines. You can cover 310 miles as a crow flies, or 817 if you don't feel like flying. PAL-V has finally managed to settle the kind of flight certification that the flight will have to meet. That is Small Rotor Certification CS27 for European air regulation walks. As of yet, the PAL-V hasn't been shown to actually fly, but that's not holding PAL-V back, who reports that they have over 100 pre-orders in place. The Liberty will be offered first with 90 Pioneer editions that have an asking price of $599,000, then giving away to the regular Liberty for $399,000. The $200,000 premium gets you special badging that identifies it as the first 90, as well as an exclusive carbon fiber package, so totally worth it. Another company going for the trike to flight model is the Samsung Sky Switchblade, the bargain of the bunch at $140,000. Being behind the curve, Samsung is hedging his claim to be first. They're offering the first flying sports car. 
that's an important distinction, because so far, the Switchblade hasn't been certified for either of its modes. But, to prove that this dual-purpose strike, billed as a time machine for the time it saves you in transit, could at least keep up with a healthy economy car, it did an acceleration test to reach takeoff speed 88 miles per hour. Get it? Back to the future? Ha, <laughs> you get it. So far on land, it's making the run from nothing to 60 in 6.5 seconds on its way to 125 miles per hour. Despite not being able to make it to the road or sky, Samsung Sky has received over a thousand deposits for the Switchblade. All of these transforming flying cars have one Achilles heel, yet the drive to an airport and land at an airport. As it turns out, on average people live 15 minutes from an airport, but it's still a bit of a hassle with flight plans, inspections, and air traffic control. There are a lot of companies that are betting on another type of flying car that involves a generous interpretation of the word car. In this case, car means a personal or small vehicle to get you around that does not ever turn into the car the way you and I know it. Instead, these are multi-rotor craft like the radio-controlled drones that have gotten so popular, sized up so that they can take people and cargo. It might be less confusing to use the other term they're going by, flying taxis. Companies are working with cities to build the infrastructure required to accommodate small, low-flying craft, traveling either to and from nearby cities or within the city itself. While you're still limited by access points, these can be more conveniently located. Several models have already reached the test flight phase. Like transformable cars, there are plenty of startups hoping to usher in the technology. That includes Autoflight, whose unmanned eVTOL, that's electric, vertical, and takeoff, has made its first transition flight. It leaves the ground going vertical, and then propels the craft forward, horizontally using wing surfaces to keep it flying. Joby Aero Inc. of Santa Cruz, California, go banana slugs, has marked its own milestone by having their full-size craft cover 150 miles on a single charge. Unfortunately, in February, one of the two Joby test vehicles crashed while being pushed for speed, traveling at 270 miles an hour, a 70-mile premium over the advertised top speed of 200 miles per hour. Over in Japan, startup SkyDrive became the first eVTOL to achieve flight with a pilot on board. SkyDrive was already in the package delivery business with their unmanned eVTOLs, but hopes that their SD3 will be the smallest eVTOL offering a compact, an easy way to move individuals around. Up north, in Palo Alto, go trees. Wait, that can't be right. Huh? The Stanford mascot is a tree? Anyway, in the land of Google, Apple, and the Stanford trees, Archer had its first flight test in December on its unmanned flying taxi project as part of its step towards an FAA certification. Leave it to the engineering prowess of the Germans. Volocopter has completed a five-minute flight test covering three kilometers at a height of 50 meters, traveling 45 kilometers an hour all with people on board. The test was overseen by officials in South Korea who have been ahead of the curve in both facilitating the testing and development of the flying taxi, as well as building the infrastructure that will be needed once one of these are ready for prime time. It's not just a series of startups from Northern California college towns and German engineers. There have been some big money investors coming from big money manufacturers. At the 2021 CES show, GM revealed a Cadillac flying taxi, signaling their intent to explore the market. In 2020, Hyundai showed off their flying taxi, promising that it would be available for rides in eight years. Unfortunately, shortly after that reveal, Hyundai's partner Uber sold off its flying taxi operations to Joby. Luxury sports car maker Aston Martin presented a concept rendering of their eVTOL design with Cranefield University, Cranefield Aerospace Solutions, and Rolls-Royce. That's not fancy car Rolls-Royce, but rather legendary aircraft engine builder Rolls-Royce as a personal craft with hybrid power and autonomous flight. True to form, it resembles a racing drone if a racing drone was designed by Aston Martin. Porsche has teamed up with Boeing to explore their own eVTOL options, but have done it with eyes wide open. The eVTOL market is expected to be at $35 billion by 2035, but Porsche figures that will require $20 billion invested with no hope of getting returned before 2030. They've also done the math, and the full court press of manufacturing flying taxis and building infrastructure would end up only accounting for 0.3% of a city's mobility. Porsche sees flying taxis as part of a tapestry to address various transportation problems in cities rather than a strict panacea.
The sobering reality about the just around the corner flying car is that the first attempt at flying cars happened just 10 years after the invention of the airplane. The 1917 Curtis's autoplane hoped to get the airplane's chocolate and the car's peanut butter with the autoplane, but it was never clear if it was a plane that could shed its wings and become a car or just a plane built with the car's accommodations. Many attempts followed, including the 1949 Aero Car, which managed to be a car that towed its wings to the airport and became a plane that would fly to another airport and tow its wings out again. However, only three made it to production, one of them selling for $800,000 in 2019. Canadian engineer Paul Moeller spent 50 years trying to unlock the flying car secret, with his company going dark in 2015. Generally, the problem is, cars that can take off from airports with six to seven figure price tags are too niche. The EV tolls face their own regulatory hurdles, but they had the advantage of having advocates on both the manufacturing side and the cities where they would fly. Really, I won't be happy until we have spinners from Blade Runner, complete with the jet of steam that shoots out as it takes off. Bonus points if it has the digital analog dash. 